Welcome back to Westwood Engineering. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to use the laser cutter in our lab. We're specifically going to address this presentation towards using the Universal Laser Systems 6.75, 75 watt laser cutter. Let's get rolling. So as we get started with this, let's first talk about the, the components that uh, make up our laser cutting system. First of all, you'll find over by the laser cutter, you're going to find a dedicated computer. And that dedicated computer uh, formats the file for printing, basically sends the code out to the uh, laser cutter. That's really its only purpose in life. It's just hooked up to the laser cutter. There's no internet. There's no nothing else on that. If you want to move a file to that computer, you're going to have to use a USB key to do it. So use one of the lab USB keys. Uh, second thing is on the wall, there's a blue lever, which I've shown you in class, and I'll show you again, uh, that controls the airflow to the laser cutter. So the laser cutter will not run without the air assist on. And what this is, is a clean, uh, basically a purified, oil-free and moisture-free air source that helps the laser cutter to make a clean cut. Uh, and probably as important, uh, it also keeps any dust and debris off of the optics, so it preserves the longevity of the laser cutter. It will not run without the air assist on. The third thing here is equally important, and this is the uh, exhaust fan. This is actually the model we have. There's a switch on top of it. The exhaust fan sits physically behind the laser cutter. Uh, and that exhaust fan blows all of the uh, fumes and smoke outdoors. Uh, if you do not turn that on, you will rapidly fill the lab with fumes and smoke. Uh, some of it is not particularly good to breathe either, so we want to utilize that exhaust fan. Then last, of course, is the laser cutter itself. Here it is, Universal Laser Systems uh, 75 watt CO2 laser. Uh, it has a bed that is 32 inches wide by 18 inches tall, uh, and it's basically got a honeycomb bed that you can lay your material on to cut. The top lid hinges open with a black handle up here where my cursor is flashing. This front door opens and closes to take the cutting bed in and out. There's a set of controls in the upper right corner which are mimicked by the computer screen, which I'll show you here in a minute. Well, before we go any further, let's talk about some general safety rules that we have to all comply with around the laser cutter. Uh, it's a powerful tool, very useful in our lab for rapid prototyping, but uh, the first rule here is you have to be trained to use a laser cutter. Please don't try and guess on how to use this. This video is part of that training. Uh, you'll also get a hands-on demonstration and a checkout. The second thing is whatever you're cutting, you have to supervise it. That means you stay near the cutter and you watch the cutter. It is using heat to cut material and you can start things on fire if you are not careful. So you have to be there to monitor it. Third thing is cut only approved materials and uh, there's no exceptions to this. Uh, what I will approve uh, without any kind of review is any type of wood, any type of paper, including cardstock, and any type of acrylic. Those are fairly inert objects to cut in the laser cutter. Never cut anything that's flammable, uh, such as any type of foam. Highly, highly flammable different types of foam. And we can uh, burn the machine up. You have to be sure that the fire extinguisher is present. It is mounted directly behind the machine. It is about at the height of the machine. You can't miss it. And the last thing is kind of obvious, but never defeat any safety interlocks. There's safety interlocks that turn off the laser if you open any of the doors. Uh, so we always want those safety interlocks in place. So let's talk about how a laser cutter actually cuts. On the right-hand side, we've got a diagram. I'm going to walk you through this. Uh, at the back of our laser cutter, there is a laser resonator tube. Uh, basically, that creates the laser wave form. And that is filled with CO2 gas, and that is excited to emit a laser or a coherent light beam. That light beam is not visible to you, uh, and it basically it is transmitted via mirrors. Uh, and it's moved out from the laser tube, out on to the gantry, and then pointed back down by another mirror to focus and cut the workpiece. 
Now that laser focus is done through the Z travel of the bed. It moves up and down and what it's really doing is setting the focal length so that it's focused at the right point to cut the material sharply. The air assist is that laser gas in the diagram that you see uh, and that's really just air that blows out around the cut and helps to blow the material through after it's vaporized uh, and also keeps the optics clean, keeps gas and debris from going back up in and hitting the focusing lens or any of the other uh, beam bending mirrors. Now this beam moves back and forth on an XY gantry to trace the pattern. We don't really cut in three dimensions, we cut in two dimensions and we focus to the third dimension, the Z height. Now what can it do? It can cut obviously. It'll cut an outline. And when I say it'll cut an outline, what it's going to do is it's basically going to go around and trace a pattern. Uh, the way that we control what gets cut and what doesn't get cut in the image is by the color of the lines, which we'll address here in a little bit. A red line is a cut line, and that red cut line has to be a hairline, or the thinnest line available uh, in our graphics program, which is CorelDRAW. Generally, the cuts are done last in a job. So typically the sequence is it will raster, then it will vector engrave, then it will cut the outline. Now, vector engraving is really a low power cut and it's kind of tracing and engraving around. Uh, and it's really similar to low power cutting. And what you use here is a blue line. That's what's vector engraved. Uh, it is a hairline or the thinnest line only and then the vectors are typically done right after the rasters and before the cuts. The last thing we can do is raster. And this is a little uh, gif of a raster going on. And what you'll see is it is etching an image onto a piece of wood here. This is sped up dramatically, by the way. Uh, and it will attempt to raster all lines that are thicker than a hairline. It also will, by default, raster black lines. Anything that has a black fill will also be rastered. Now, gradations of black, such as a light gray, will produce a lighter intensity raster. So that's pretty straightforward. Our principal line colors that we use are black for raster, red for cut, blue for engrave. So what is this thing actually cutting? And the short answer is it's cutting a picture. It's cutting an image. Now you can use almost any image in this machine. The best ones though are vector graphics. And the vector graphic that we use all the time right up here is where my cursor is flashing is called a DXF. That DXF file is something we can export out of SOLIDWORKS, which I'll show you here in a little bit. It'll also cut SVG, EPS, PDFs, and Adobe Illustrator files if you happen to do your own artwork. Now raster images also work, but they work well for raster cuts only. They don't trace really well uh, without a lot of processing. You can use uh, a GIF, a TIFF, a PNG, a JPEG, any of those will work for a raster cut. So that's where it gets its cut information. And think of the laser cutter as a printer, essentially. And we have a process to print. And our process, the first thing we're going to do here, which I'll show you in just a couple minutes, is we first start by opening up CorelDRAW. We take that CorelDRAW software and we import our file into it. And once our file is in CorelDRAW, we can do some things like edit the line thickness, make the hairlines where we want to cut or uh, engrave. We can change fill colors so that we can raster. And we can change line colors so we can cut, engrave, or raster. So that's the edit part. Other things we can do is scale it. We can manipulate it. We can line things up. We can add text and edit the file. We can do a lot of different things that are outside the scope of this presentation within CorelDRAW. Once we have the file looking the way that we want it to look, we are then going to print to the laser. And when we print to the laser, all we really have to do is tell it what the material is and then how thick the material is as well. Now, the reason that we need to tell it the thickness of the material is because that provides two pieces of critical data. 
The first thing that it does is it says, hey, how much power and what type of pulses, how many pulses per second, uh, will it require to cut or raster or engrave that material? Different material densities require different power settings. And equally important, the thickness of the material also determines what height the Z-bed should move to to achieve the correct focal length or just focus the laser beam. So that's the essence of how it works. Let's take a quick break and hop back in here and look at the process together. We'll be right back. Okay, our first step here is to create a DXF file from a SOLIDWORKS part. I happen to have the little acrylic ruler that we spent a little bit of time doing patterns and repeats here. And I'm going to use this as my uh, file to create a DXF. Right now it's a SOLIDWORKS part. Creating a DXF is really quite simple. The first thing that I need to do is I need to look straight down at it. So there's a couple different ways I can look straight down at it. Easiest way to do that is probably just to hit the space bar and touch the view cube. And now I'm looking down at the front view. You'll see down here where my cursor is flashing. It's the front view. Now I'm going to go ahead and save it, but I'm going to save it as a DXF file. So I'll go File, Save As. And I want to choose this drop down and I'll save it to the same location as where the original file is as a DXF. And then create save. Now you get this confirmation window and it asks you to choose which view you want to export. Now I generally always choose one of my three primary views, front, top, uh, or right view on it. But you can also use the current view if I'm looking straight down on it. Realize though if you have this not orthogonal to your view, it's going to create some weird images. When I'm happy with what I'm going to export, hit the check mark. It will preview it in a little window. And that's what it will export. Now, if I want to remove any lines here, I can zoom in and click on lines within here and I can remove them. But if you've done this first part correctly, you shouldn't need to do that. So I'm happy with that image. And I'll go ahead and click Save. So now I've exported my DXF file. Let's hop over to the Corel Draw. I've put this on a USB key and I'm walking over to the computer by the laser cutter now. Okay, I'm over at the computer and I've got Corel Draw running. That's this little icon in the bottom of my screen. I'll start a new document and use a default profile for it. I always give your documents a name. In this instance, I'll call it Ruler. You'll see that it's set up to be the same size as the bed of the cutter. Click OK. This will show the plate that appears in the cutter, 32 inches wide by 18 deep. I navigate to where my file is, my DXF file, and I just drag it down onto that plate. Now I do need to select my units. Typically automatic is correct, but you can see from the original size that it automatic brings it in a 6 inch ruler, and that's good. When it comes in, I'm going to get a message about a font. Just click OK. Now you'll see that it comes in with some font or some printing underneath of it. And what I want to do is I want to ungroup that from the object itself. So I select it, choose Group, Ungroup Objects, or Control U. I now want to delete this writing. I don't really want to cut that. Once I've deleted the writing, reselect my objects and choose Group or Control G. I now have the ruler that I'm going to cut out. But the lines are the wrong type. You'll see in the, in the upper portion of the screen, they're 0.709 uh, points in size. So what I want to do is I want to change that. And I can also reposition it. You'll see that I can select a corner or the middle point and type in an XY position where the image will appear. This image will appear in the same place on the laser cutter bed as when I place it in Corel. So I can also just click and drag it around. You'll see that position will update. So put it where you want. It's not real critical because we can reposition it later on. 
In this instance, I'm going to make it about minus 0.1 and 0.1. Now what I need to do here is I need to basically choose all of my lines and choose a hairline. So that's what I've done. I've clicked the image and chose hairlines. That means they'll all be cut. None of them will be rastered. Now, what I can do is choose individual lines and give them line colors. So if I ungroup the objects, I can go around and pick individual lines like this bottom line, and then I can right click to choose a color. Red will cut. I can also click, select all of the lines and right click for blue, which is engrave. I'm gonna make all the interior lines blue and then I'm going to select the individual exterior lines to cut the outline of the object. I'm right clicking each time. Once I've got my line color selected, I want to group my lines again so my part doesn't fly apart. I'm now ready to cut it. To cut it, simply select Print. Go File, Print. Click on the Preference button. This Preference button is where you select the material, type, and its thickness. You'll see several categories. We're going to use plastic, cast acrylic. Our cast acrylic happens to be 0.125 inches thick. When you're happy, click Apply and OK. Now I'm ready to send it to the printer. Just hit the Print button, and that sends it to the laser cutter. The laser cutter won't start cutting right away. It will instead compile the program. Down here in the lower portion of the screen, you'll see this little UCP icon, the small red icon in the middle of your screen. Click on that. That brings up what got sent to the printer, and here is my ruler on the printer. You'll notice I can position it and drag it around just like I could in CorelDRAW. If I type this in, this is the literal XY grid on the, print, on the laser cutter surface that it will cut it. I can zoom in and out using my mouse wheel. And I can click the magnify and click in and out also. The settings that I set when I sent the print file over can be modified on this screen. And all I have to do is to go ahead and click the settings and I can change the material, thickness, the power, and a few other variables that are beyond the scope of this presentation. Now I've got my part ready to print. It's positioned on the cutter bed, the material is set, and I'm ready to turn on all of the air and exhaust. It's time to cut the file. <clears throat> Remember, when you go to cut the, fi cut the file on the uh, laser cutter, you need to turn on your air, turn on your exhaust, and plan to be there to monitor the cutting for the entire duration of the cut. The power switch for the laser cutter, it should be on before you sent the file over. So here I'm looking at the actual file being cut. So what we've done is we've hit the green button up in the upper right hand corner. That starts the cutting process. I've sped this up at about three times speed. And what you'll see is the graphic on the screen is actually showing what is being cut on the laser cutter. You can watch it in either place. It shows the progress. I just show about half of the ticks cut here, about half of the part. Each one of these rulers takes about six minutes to cut. When the material is done being cut, you'll see the gantry will turn to the upper right hand position. At that point, leave the lid closed for a couple of minutes before you open it to take out your part. Take your part out, turn off the air, turn off the exhaust, turn off the machine and remove all materials and scrap from the bed. It's very important for safety that we never leave any materials that can be cut or burned on the bed in between uses. That's about all there is to using the laser cutter. Thanks for watching.